People are definitely interested in Pluralsight, but what is this platform all about and is it worth your time and money? Well, I coughed up some cash recently for an annual premium membership and today I'm taking you behind the scenes of Pluralsight. What's up developers? It's Real Tough Candy from RealToughCandy.io popping back on for another review with you today. We are checking out Pluralsight, but not just any Pluralsight. They have the monthly personal plan. They have the annual personal plan. But I decided to go all out and get into this premium annual plan for $449 per year. This is what you get with the personal, essentially the videos plus. Um, the entire course library is video based. You have learning paths, offline viewing, mobile and TV apps, all of this stuff related to the videos. Same thing with the personal, same thing with the premium. You also get the assessments included with all these tiers. So with the premium plan, you get certification practice exams, interactive courses, and projects. And to be really honest, the two reasons I signed up for the VIP premium plan was because I wanted to see the interactive courses and the projects. These are both really big features and I feel like just the, the personal plans would be pretty underwhelming. So I upgraded. And today we're gonna take a look at some of those features and go behind the scenes. Let me pop on to my account over here. Now this is my homepage. As you can see, I've been exploring a lot of courses Introduction to Web Development, React Getting Started, JavaScript, Basics, uh, Managing Cisco Products, because why not? Uh, and for those of you who don't know, I'm a software developer, but there are IT and cybersecurity course tracks here as well. I hit the Browse button right here, and as you can see, there's a section on Software Development, IT Ops, Information, and Cybersecurity. And the, that's kind of the first thing, if not the first thing that popped out to me about this platform is that they have a lot of options. So if you want to explore your different career paths or possibilities in this thing we call tech, Pluralsight might be a good place to start with that just because they do lay out the different paths, the different disciplines so clearly um, on the browse section. So I'm going to go into software development. We'll hit view more and see what we're working with. There are a lot of courses here. 245 results for Angular, C Sharp has 139, React 69. Some of these courses built in application resiliency, Microsoft Azure developer, holy smokes. It's kind of too much for me right now. So I'm gonna go back, I'll hit web development and we will see what they have for us, 290 results. Now the top result here is called Introduction to Web Development. Good choice if you're just starting out in web development. We'll click on this. As you can see though, before I do, there are reviews that students gave to each of these courses. Now, strangely, I can't click or read the reviews. I can just see the star ratings and how many people left a review. So there's really a lack of context there. And I think that's kind of a disservice, but I'll, I'll save the critique for later on. Let's, let's go explore this and you can get a feel for their video page and how this is laid out. And if I remember correctly, this is actually a front end master's course. Oh yeah. I recognize that samurai music. We'll go to what is CSS. And so it's a live lecture format, but to be clear, front end masters do not produce all the videos in here. And so how this works is there are, these are independent contractors from my understanding. Uh, they produce courses and they submit them to plural sites. So there are a ton of different instructors. There are a ton of smaller uh, development education outfits submitting their materials. The quality is really all over the place, not just web development, but some of their IT stuff. Some people sound like robots and they're just reading off slides. It's very boring, very dry. Other instructors are more engaging and it is really inconsistent. That is something I noticed. So let's keep going down here. We have full stack web development with Python, 2015 last updated. That's over five years ago. I wouldn't trust this course. React getting started. This one's from 2020. And I do appreciate that the dates are published here, but this is web development and a course that is four, five, and six years old. No doubt you're gonna run into some roadblocks when it comes to developing, when it comes to setting up your local environment, working on projects, even getting the simple stuff to work. Now, for example, front-end web development gets started. 
by Joe Eames. I actually know this guy. He sponsored a video about six months ago on my other channel, Real Tough Candy. He now is in charge of Thinkster.io. Uh, but this, more importantly, is from 2014, over six years ago, getting started with front end web development. And in the content in here, if this was the year 2014, this content would be fine. But once we get into this section, I didn't go through all of all of these. But I said, okay, where where should I start? Let me go to basic libraries and tools. And I was looking at some of these lectures, uh, talking about MVC frameworks, talking about knockout and backbone. And these things are really uh, in web development years, ancient history. And so to spend your time studying uh, antiquated technologies is not a real good use of your time, especially because we do have so many other great instructors and platforms out there that do keep their material up to date. So that was a bummer. I love the auto dark mode here. I love the color combos. I love the setup of this. Um, but getting into the content was my first big, oh no, why, why do you do this to me? Let's go in to the browse area. And then I'm gonna show you guys some of my benefits as a premium member. So again, the two reasons I really did sign up for this were for the interactive courses and the projects. So let's go check out these projects. There are a few things that I do like about these projects. Number one, they're really diverse. And if you want to explore different technologies and really just start building something, you can do it. Java to securing spring data to building a personal budget with Python, implementing OAuth with Node.js. On the other hand, if you don't know what project to tackle, if you're a code newbie, this can be overwhelming. Some of these say they're for beginners, and it would be really nice to have a sort option here where you can sort it by beginner, intermediate or advanced, where you can sort it by technology. Most of these projects are from 2020 though, which that pleased me, that was good to see. Let's go down here to the first project. This is the Hello Pluralsight project. I took a crack at this one the other day just to see the, the flow. and. I really like the concept with this. Going into the other projects, the concept is similar, if not the same. You're setting up your environment and then you do the project. And after that, you submit your code to Pluralsight. They check it and then they share with you or their program shares with you what you need to improve or if you got it completely right. So I downloaded this and let me show you my index file. I didn't do anything with this thing and you're gonna see how this works. So as you can see, a pretty sad, lonely HTML file. And in the project, they wanted me to add a page title, add a header element, create an unordered list. I didn't do any of that stuff. So let's see if they yell at me uh, when I drag my project here. It says drag and drop your project folder here to check your work. So I'll just go ahead and drag that here. And in real time, Pluralsight is checking my work. I just love this feature. I haven't seen this anywhere else. You can get uh, nearly instantaneous feedback. And for each of these components, I can also watch the solution and compare my solution. Let's go to the other premium feature, interactive courses. This is a great addition to ostensibly, but once you get into it, I'm seeing the same type of problems. Uh, no way to organize, no way to, no way to filter or sort these courses. So if I wanna go learn SQL, I have to go all the way down here. And every time I want to go check out an interactive course, I have to scroll all the way down here. Um, would love to see some sort and filter options with this. So going down here, let's check out some JavaScript using alert, confirm, and prompt. This is an introduction to the very basics of the JavaScript language. Learn how to work with the built-in alert, confirm, and prompt functions. The interactive course was formerly part of JavaScript Road Trip 2 on Code School. So this is another example of the feeling I get of these things being hastily put together where they didn't take the time to rebrand it. They probably bought out smaller companies and bought their material and put it on their platform, which is great. That's business, right? But as a student, I need it to be a little more cohesive. So these interactive courses start out with the video, short lecture, eight minutes, and it brings you to an interactive code editor right in your browser, no setup required. And these interactive code editors are one of my favorite things I've been seeing in a lot of these learn to code platforms because it can save you, it will save you hours of setup time. I'm going to submit this code and see what happens. Incorrect submission. Oops, it seems we're still logging our messages. We need to change our console.log function calls to an alert. So they give you hints. And if you're still not getting it, you can see the answer and they will pop up. Let me apply changes here. So my changes popped up. I submit 
and now I got it right. And that's the gist of the interactive videos. So here is what I do like about Pluralsight. Number one, I like the concept of the project workflow. I really like that whatever project you take, you're working with Git, you're getting that organization going. Uh, it's something you're gonna use in the real world. And it was really neat seeing these projects being run against these tests and having that nearly immediate feedback. Something I haven't seen on other platforms, I also like some of the more intermediate course topics and their certification prep offerings. Now that's something I really didn't get into in this review, but as you can see, there are a lot of options here, maybe some stuff you've never heard of. So this can be a good platform to start exploring, uh, maybe just, you know, test the waters. Here is what I don't really like about this platform. Number one, these courses need updating, especially web development. Having a web dev course that's six years old, is it's not good. It's just not good. I also think they need to pay more attention to detail, better organization. I feel like a lot of the material and a lot of the features were hastily thrown together. Filtering options, basic filtering options would be a huge upgrade. The instructor quality varies. A lot of the instructors are very obviously reading from a slide. Some instructors do sound pretty robotic, so it does become a little impersonal. Um, from what I saw, the student discussions are on discuss on a different window. Uh, there's no integrated Q&A in the videos like Udemy, you can just hit a tab and there's a huge Q&A section. For what I'm paying, again, for the price point, I want to see a better community section. And that brings me to my final point. I don't like this price point. I think it's too expensive for what I got, especially because of the issues I mentioned earlier. I'm just not seeing where the value is with that. All in all, I think Pluralsight is just okay. It's not on my list of top tier go-to platforms. That goes for both their personal plans and their premium plan. Um, if you can get your work to pay for a premium plan or if your library offers it for free or whatever, it might be worth it for some of the projects. Otherwise, I would stick with their free trial and then move on to the next platform. But again, they do have the free trial for all these plans. Uh, so explore it. You know, maybe there is something you do like. And if you sign up for the premium, you still get like seven or 10 days of, of premium. And you can check out those projects. I think the project workflow is one of the strongest suits of the premium plan. Maybe by next year at this time, I will be able to revise my review. That would be awesome. That'd be super cool because I think Pluralsight does have a lot of good features. It's just, um, you know, the, the negative ones overshadow the good ones. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.